Hey YouTube, it's Marita from the Nurse Lounge and today we're going to do something kind of fun. I am a registered nurse as you all know and I just finished doing Nurses Week videos and I really enjoyed doing those videos and having that content for you all but I wanted to do something where we could kind of explore what my quirks are as a nurse. So as you know, nurses have quirks or idiosyncrasies or things that they do that they do and you'll know what I'm talking about if you stay tuned. All right, so we are back. My name is Marita, I'm a registered nurse. I um, am wanting to do this video because I want to do something kind of fun, uplifting, or just something that is serious this video so what i decided to do was tell you 15 things that i consider to be a dr marita p quirk when it comes to nursing so 15 nurse quirks about me is what the title of this video is so nurse quirks are basically things that are actually 16 i just added one 16 things so nurse quirks are basically things that because of my OCD, it has to be this way. And mind you, we are nurses. Because we're nurses, we know that things have to change from time to time. But for the most part, I have to have things just like these things listed. Um, otherwise, it kind of gets on my nerves. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. All right. So the first thing is, um, believe it or not, I am rarely on time. And what I mean by that is, I'm not one who's just chronically late, but if we have to be there at 645, I am not that nurse who's there at 630 to get her things together and get ready to get on the floor. No, I'm the nurse who comes in at 646. And but when I do come in, I come in ready. I come in with my clipboard, everything ready to go. And I'm they're not really waiting on me, so to speak. I don't have to come in and get coffee and things like that. I come in and uh, definitely get my stuff done and be ready to take reports at 646 when shift changed at 645 so that's the number one thing you will ever hardly ever catch me um early so if i come in at 640 they're like oh my gosh what happened why are you even here this early and i'm like i don't even know you better write it down because this won't happen again so that's number one number two is once i get to work and i'm trying to kind of go in order of my day and things that i think of in order of my day um, at work but I may jump around some number two is I'm territorial so at the beginning of the shift we all have to figure out where we sit in so the first thing I'll say is who's sitting where and when I say who's sitting where that means once I claim this seat nobody else can sit here now mind you doctors do come in and sit in your seats from time to time but as the nurses who are working on the floor that day who is sitting where so if you're sitting in the back cubby, uh, back cubby I'm sitting in the front cubby somebody else is sitting somewhere else that is where we sit the entire shift that is it you know now i will if i'm not using the computer and maybe a doctor sitting in their station and they want to um you know they need to sit in mine to chart i'm perfectly okay with that but what i'm saying is we're not changing seats all day long i like to put my things down come back and sit it down somewhere and they know that's my spot so that's just me some nurses like to play musical chairs all day long i'm not like that i'm like let's find out where we're sitting and let's stay there the entire day number three if you watch my videos long enough, especially my work with me videos, you will know that I eat breakfast around 7.30 in the morning. So I come in, get report, and after I get report, the first thing I go do is, okay, got report, I'm headed off to go get me something to eat. That's the first thing of, of anything. Now, if we have an emergency or something going on, obviously I'm not gonna go eat breakfast. But for me, I'm definitely someone who eats breakfast and I order the same thing every time. I order an omelet with mushroom, ham, and spinach usually. And I have some type of fruit, depends on what they have, usually pineapple or a cantaloupe, strawberry, something like that. And then I'll have me a Minute Maid cranberry juice drink or something along those lines. So I definitely am predictable in that sense, okay? So breakfast at 7.30 is a must for me. Um, I always want to have protein because it really helps, get, gives me the fuel that I need to get through my, at least my morning assessments and things like that. Um, so that's number three. Number four, is that um i love to cluster my care i have my book here if you can see and i have the, you'll see me look down from time to time 
I love to cluster my care in the mornings. So I will not start my assessments until it's time to do my first med pass. And our first med pass is at nine o'clock. However, we can pass our meds as early as 8 a.m. So after breakfast, which is at 7.30, I eat. Then I go kind of check my, um, well, I usually check my Mars before I go to breakfast. I kind of check that, but if I didn't check it before I go, then I'll check it when I come back from breakfast. And I check my Mars, see who needs, who needs what when. And then after that, I tend to get all my medications together. And then I usually will go and cluster my care. So I'm doing my assessments that morning. I'm doing um, passing the meds if they have meds to do. And then I'm also doing vital signs and getting my water pitchers filled. And I'm doing that for my whole six patients that I have. Excuse me. I do that for everyone. That way, when I'm done with assessments, I'm done with assessments. That is on a typical day. There are some times where I have to go, stop, go, stop, go, stop. But we're talking about on a typical day where I normally have a routine. And this is what I like to do. I really like to um, get those things done all at one time. If a patient calls out, you know, then I will go take care of their needs or whatever. But for the most part, this is kind of what I like to do. My next thing, when it comes to assessment specifically, I don't like feet. So that is number, let's see, one, two, number five. I do not like feet. I don't like touching people's feet at all. Um, it, I wouldn't say it grosses me out, but I, I, I wear gloves anyway, but I wear gloves, especially if I'm touching somebody's feet. And it doesn't make a difference how beautiful their feet are, how polished, how whatever. I have a thing about feet that I don't like people, I don't like touching people's feet. And really I don't like people touching mine. So I know that's an odd quirk to have, but that definitely is something that's unique to me where I'm like, oh no, I don't, I'm not a foot person. So I'm not really trying to touch their feet, but that's number five. Number six, I chart on the fives. On the fives is what I chart. So let's just say I'm charting. I'm going to chart at 805, 8, 805, 815, 810, 815, 820, like that. I, if I went into the room at 813, it's getting charted for probably 815. I don't know why that is, but I have a thing with that that number. It's on the fives automatically for me. Um, the only time I'm specific to a time is when I had like a rapid response or I had, you know, something that had to be time sensitive, like starting blood or something like that. Otherwise, it's on the fives for me. So again, 8 o'clock, 805. Don't make a difference when it actually happened. If it happened at 8, 8.03, I'm either going to round up or down to 8 o'clock or 8.05. And that's just kind of how I chart. Um, something else that... Something else that I do is... Um, number, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Number seven. So, the sound of someone getting sick. So, throwing up. That sound makes me sick. I can look at vomit all day long. I can look at blood, vomit. I can look at it, empty it, clean the basin out, hand it back to you. But the sound of you getting sick, a person getting sick, it makes me nauseous. And I'm kind of like, oh, I feel like I'm going to throw up myself. So I try to let the patient finish what they're going to do before I come in there. Because otherwise I'm like dry heaving in the bathroom as I'm listening to them or whatever. I can't, I can't deal with the sound of uh, someone getting sick. It, it's, I just can't do it. All right, um, so the next one is, let me see, that was number eight. So this kind of goes back to my assessments and getting all that stuff done. But immediately after I finish my assessments, so I've, I've, med, I've medicated my patients, I've did my med rounds, did my med rounds, I've filled my water pictures up, I've did my assessments, I've did any interventions that I need to do for that morning. The next thing is I have to chart immediately. So if I'm usually done doing assessments by, if I started at about eight, I'm done doing assessments by nine, 9.30 maybe. And then I start charting immediately. I'm one of those who has to have that stuff done. I don't save anything for the end of the day. Now, again, there's been some videos that I've had where I was like, I'm not even done charting from this morning. And that's because I was very busy that day. But on a typical day, I like to go in, get my stuff done and immediately start charting right after the fact. So, um, again, assessments are done and then I start charting right after the fact and I finish all six patients to include their vital signs, assessments, their flow sheet, their care plans, their teaching, vital signs. Everything is documented at that one time. So it may take me probably about a good one and a half to two hours to chart for six patients, depending on what I had to chart and how many systems I had to use. We use two computer systems. So for our um, OB patients, we use 
uh, GE, uh, perinatal something. And then for uh, my GYN patients, I use Cerner, which is what the rest of the hospital uses. So I've, I, we use two different systems. So I sometimes have to go back and forth depending on what patient population I have. If I have a GYN, then I will have to go in Cerner and so forth. So the next one is, let me see, number nine. I'm going to eat lunch even if I have to chart while doing so. So the whole point is I'm going to eat. I ate breakfast. Now, mind you, usually I'm the only one who goes down for breakfast. A lot of the other nurses will like, you know, I'm not really that hungry or they eat before they come. So I'm usually the first one who goes down for breakfast. So I will let them go down for lunch first. And I usually have my lunch later. Now, because of the times of the cafeteria, sometimes I have to go get my food and bring it up and just heat it up later. But for the most part, I'm going to take me a lunch. I'm going to be sitting there for, you know, my 30 minutes, eat my lunch or whatever I'm going to do. If I feel like I am behind on my charting, there's times where I will eat while I chart. And technically, that's not a formal lunch. You're supposed to be able to not do any work while you're um, at lunch. But because of the times that our cafeteria is open and we have access to food, I eat when I have time to eat. So, but the point is, is I'm going to eat. I'm eating all the time. Number 10. I begin my med passes one hour early. So what that basically means is that if medications are due, like I told you about in the mornings, if they're due at nine o'clock, I pass them at eight o'clock. My two o'clock meds, I try to pass them at one o'clock. Um, if it's something that's due at say 12 and one, I do it at 1230 in the middle. So I'm really big on, you know, passing your meds and passing them on time. And if anything, try to be a little early in case something else happens that throws you behind. So I pass all my meds roughly about an hour early-ish, something like that, which leads me to my next one. I use the word ish on everything. So when I talk to my patients and in the mornings, I will say, okay, I'll be back around one or two-ish to do your vital signs and fundal assessment. So that ish says to them, it's not gonna be two o'clock on the dot, not one o'clock on the dot, it's going to be around that time. So, you know, some of, these, some of these patients will actually watch the clock. And when they watch the clock, they're like, okay, you said you're going to be here at 2 o'clock. I said, no, I said it's going to be around 2-ish, which means 2, 2.15, maybe 2.30, something maybe 1.30. You know, it just depends on what's going on with me and my uh, patients. So, ish is the word I use all the time. And I will say that all day long. I say, okay, I'm going to be back about 4-ish or 5-ish to um, do your next set of rounds or whatever it happens to be. So they hear that word a lot from me. And then the nurses here, here's my next one. The nurses here, this is my phrase. They don't pay enough to do that. So it may be something like, I can't think of something at the moment, but I feel like they always dump more and more stuff on us um, every time I go to work. It's more and more and more and more work that we have to do. And so I'm at a point now where I'm like, okay, they ain't paying me enough to do that. And I won't do it. I typically won't even do it. So if it doesn't involve patient care, if it doesn't involve um, my direct pay, doesn't involve some type of injury of some sort or something happening to my patient, I'm like, they don't pay me enough to do that. So when these nurses go around, I don't know, I can give an example of something. Let me think of something real quick. Um, so maybe it's to, um, here's an example. So at one point in time, our food ambassadors, which are the people who brought the trays up to the patients, they had quit or got fired or something had happened to them. And as a result, the nurses were supposed to leave the floor. The, the nurses were supposed to, they, food, food, food services would call and say, your patient in room such and such as food is ready. We were supposed to go downstairs, go pick up their food, bring it back, and bring them the dirty tray from the previous meal. Times six patients, because I work day shift, times three meals. I said, they're not paying me enough to do that. I'm not doing that. And I didn't. I didn't. All the other nurses did, but I didn't. I said, well, when y'all, if y'all want me to help out with that, y'all need to bring all the trays to the patients to our floor. And they brought it in that cart thing that they bring it in. And I don't mind handing trays out from this floor, but I'm not going to go back and forth all day long for 16, for six patients times three times, um, three meals a day, taking and bringing trays back and forth. Because when am I going to be on the floor working? Y'all don't pay me enough for that. So you know, the nurses did what they did, but you know, by the time I finished with this, the reason I go come down and get no tray, can y'all bring up the trays in the cart? Guess what they did? They brought the trays up in the cart. They had been doing it that way for two weeks because nobody wanted to speak up. 
you are, who's staying on the floor with the patients if we down in the in the food services getting trays all day? Again, they don't pay me enough to do that. So no, they hired some some food ambassadors and now we good to go. But I, I don't I don't do stuff like that. Like no, I don't mind being a team player. I don't mind helping or whatever. But you but what what they were trying to do or what they were doing is putting more responsibility on me. If something happens to my patient on the floor, I'm still responsible for that while I'm down there getting trays. No no no, you all need to hire someone for that. Or if we're gonna compromise, put all the trays in, a, in the cart thing and push the cart up there and then we will deliver trays to the rooms. I had no problem doing that and I had no problem bringing dirty trays back to the cart for them to take back down. But I wasn't going back and forth to the cafeteria or food services all day to get trays. I wasn't doing it. Uh, another quirk of mine is I love to eat the hospital ice. So, I will sit there and be, one of the nurses that asked me, did I have anemia? Because I was just sitting there crunching on, <laughs> crunching on the ice all day. So I don't know, it's something about that hospital ice that, you know, um, that I happen to love. I love the hospital ice. So I'd be crunching on it all day long. And I don't have anemia, but I just, I don't know, something about that ice is good. It's kind of like that Sonic ice when they have the slushies and stuff like that and the drinks, the Sonic ice. So yeah, I, have, I happen to like the ice. All right, the next thing is I always have a 4 p.m. snack. So as you can see, my whole day revolves around food. I'm eating all day long, snacking, but I'm also burning those calories because keep in mind I had protein for breakfast and I'm eating usually probably a carb for lunch, to be honest with you, because that's what they serve is rice and carbs basically for lunch. And so therefore it's time for a 4 p.m. snack. So around four o'clock, I make sure everything is already done so I can go get me a snack of some sort. Usually it's a popsicle even, so in our, um, patient med not patient med our patient fridge we have popsicles so if i don't have time to go downstairs i'll get me a cherry popsicle and eat on that um just to have something to eat or typically in the morning i will bring um i will bring i'll buy cereal dry cereal in the morning and then i will use that as my snack in the afternoon so when i'm buying my omelet in the morning i'll use my uh that dry cereal and eat that later in the day so that's kind of my 4 p.m snack uh the next one is i have three more the next one is, it's very rare for me to stay over to chart. So you will not see me after no shift change trying to chart nothing. It is very rare. And if it does happen, it's because it was a change of shift situation or something that happened maybe at six o'clock in the afternoon and change of shift, change of shift is at 645. It's very rare, or again, a bad day, but it's very rare you'll see me charting after the shift is over. I will try, so while they give a report, I'm charting as we talking. I'm still charting, charting, charting because I am trying to leave when it's time for me to go. I, I'm not trying to stay here past a certain point in time. Um, the next thing is, being that I'm PRN, I get to select my shifts based on what's available, what holes are available. And I select my shifts based off of who is working that day. So if I see holes and I see a certain nurse working, I'm like, mm -mm, not, not, not sign up for that shift, not doing it not doing it at all and then but sometimes that's the only hole that's left because nobody wants to work with that nurse so guess who has to work with them me and because i i have to work i still have to work um i go ahead and sign up for that shift and just pray about it when i get there so i try not to work with certain people if i don't have to because it just makes for a better shift when you work with people who you know is going to work just as hard as you are then the very last one and then we are done with this video i leave as soon as report is over so we get um, we're supposed to stay there till 708 and most of the time we're so busy that we are there past 708 but on the rare occasion I had maybe say three patients at the end of my shift and I give my three patients to the nurse the nurse coming in to, to get those patients if it is seven o'clock I've clocked out they do dock us um, 15 minutes when we do clock out early like that um, but I don't care. You can have it 15 minutes. You can have it what, six, seven dollars. I don't really care. Whatever, it ha whatever it equals to be, you all can have it. Because for me, my time is more than money. So if I can save and people, I'll be seeing, I'll be seeing people stand at the clock waiting on 708 to come around for 10 minutes, for 10 minutes or something like that. And to each their own. Some people, you got, you got to have all your money. Me, y'all can have it. Okay. I wouldn't depend on the money to begin with. So y'all can have it on PRN. I don't, I don't live off of the hospital uh, income, so to speak. So I'm one of those before 708, if, if, if 645 came around or 650 came around and I was done, I'm clocking out, I'm gone. I'd be down by the interstate while they still trying to wait on that clock to turn around. 
that's just how I am. And you know, anyway, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. These are some nurse quirks about me. Please comment below some nurse quirks that you all have when you go to work. What do y'all do that you do that people think is either crazy, is funny, or you know, that's just how you are as a nurse. What nurse quirks do you will have? Comment those below. I would love to hear about them. Also, while you're here, if you're not subscribed, you need to subscribe to the Nurse Lounge. It is totally free. You will get some good information, whether it be something as silly as this or something that is truly valuable to you that will help you on your nursing journey. Or if you're thinking about being a nurse, maybe that will help you in that way. I am an OBGYN nurse, well baby nurse. So if you have any questions, I'm meeting a lot of people here on this forum that are interested in OB, which I'm happy about, or postpartum or what mother baby or whatever you all call it which I'm so elated about. And so I definitely encourage you to keep on asking me those questions. I will get to them. Go ahead and, you know, even leave comments here about videos that you would like to see me do. I have a list going. So I will, in my book, I have a list going. So definitely, you know, do those, um, put that in there. Also, I need you all to follow me on my social media platform. I have um, IG and it is called, uh, what is it called? Okay. IG is the melanin RN underscore MPN. I will leave it here or there. And I also will have it in the box below. Also, if you go to the YouTube banner at the very top, you will see two IG icons. One specifically is for my plus size fitness, or maybe not fitness no more, because we're on this Rona, you know, I haven't got the Rona weight now. So anyway, enough about that. But the other one is for uh, my IG page called the Nurse Lounge, same thing. And it's my IG version of YouTube, meaning meaning that it had my nursing journey on there in terms of my DMP program. It has all the memes, it has nursing stuff, things to kind of keep you inspired, encouraged, or if you want to get to know the real me, you know, the things that I think about, the things that I find to be funny or whatever, then definitely follow me over there. You'll see pictures of me, and my kids from time to time. I really don't put them on there a lot, but just different, you know, milestones or things like that on my page. Also, stay tuned because I am actually going to do a start a Facebook page. Um, and I'm not going to give the name of it right now, but it's going to be more so about a blog. It's going to be my, like my blog page and just things about nursing in general. So that will also be another um, avenue for you all to uh, go to to follow me there. And I will have that linked once I get that going. That's just something I'm putting out there at the moment. I'm going to have a Facebook um, page coming up. And I'm going to have a website coming up. So there's more to come. So anyway, thank you all so much for your time, attention. Thank you for watching to the end. And until the next time, take care. Bye-bye.